Hey. Yo. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition to Hunter Real Connections, and hope you all can see you and hear us. I'm here with Father Ken Torres from the Warrior Legacy Foundation. And, Hi. Uh, hey, welcome. The first guest. Hey, how you doing? I know. Thank you. Thank you. We're live. We're live. I'm trying to figure out where we're streaming out of. I'm looking at uh, this, and I'm trying to find a haunted live connection. But it's great to to be on finally. Yes, yes, yes. I am excited to be here. I like it when you commented before we were together on a on Patreon. Yeah. I like it when you said you're not the average priest. You want to elaborate on it? Yeah, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not an average, well, I, I'm not an average priest. You know, the, tr the truth is, you know, I am an independent Catholic priest. Uh, I'm not affiliated with the Vatican, but they do recognize our, uh, they do recognize our ordination as long as we have apostolic succession. Uh, I do have a real degree. I have a real religious degree, not uh, awesome. something you buy online. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that message me. They go, oh, I have a degree. You know, I have an honorary degree. They, I go, that's nice. That's I'm pretty sure you paid good money for that, but I go. I have I have a real seminary degree. I went to a private seminary college uh, in Arizona. I went to Texas Baylor College uh, University. I went to Druid Seminary there as well. I did my formation there, and uh, I'm not your typical priest because all your typical priests that you see are they're like normally they're like nice, clean cut, high dry, you know, ha oh, Ave Maria type of holy stuff. You know what I mean with the church. Yeah. I'm not that type of guy. I'm more of a street priest. You know what I mean? I'm a veteran. Um, I, I deal a lot with uh, with veterans and, and uh, you know, people who suffer with traumatic brain injuries, TBI, uh, oh, depression, right. anxiety. And so I'm a little more rough around the edges. You know what I mean? I, I, I give it to you how it is. You know, I, I give it to you how it is. You know, obviously I'll hit you with love, mercy, compassion, and joy, and, you know, give you some funny jokes here in between. But, you know, I don't have my own church. I'm not inside a church, and, uh, you know, you're not going to see me giving Mass. Everything that I do for my religious order, with the Solomonic Order of St. Michael the Archangel, we are in home monasteries. And all of the guys that are within our order and our sister, uh, you know, they all have real college degrees, they have real educations, they have to go through formation. And uh, we're doing it different because we're not content with what the Vatican is doing. We're not content with how the gospel is being preached. You know, there's um, a lot of misconceptions out there, a lot of hurt, more importantly. You know what I mean? And so I want to yeah, I want to bridge that. I want to bridge that divide because they're like, oh, well, you know, you're Catholic or you're Baptist, you're Pentecostal, you're Seventh-day Adventist. And honestly, I don't care. Who you are or what type of christian faith you are but the most important thing is be loving don't judge you know and 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 speak the truth you know uh, it kills me that you have a lot of people that they're like oh i go to church right and you know the only thing they do is just they drop a bible verse on you so when you pick up a book do you just read one verse no right you read the right they only pull it half if that. yeah it's always half and that's always been the issue people are always just like well you know uh, psh, yeah this and that so yep I'm not your average priest. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And you're also part of Warren Lacey Foundation. When did, when did that come to your life? I mean, if you don't mind sharing. So the Warren Legacy Foundation uh, came into fruition uh, a few years ago. <laughs> uh, about two years ago, I, uh, I applied. I saw that there was an opening. I applied and uh, I was interviewed by uh, two different people at the time. Uh, wonderful Catherine Cirillos interviewed me as well. And, uh, you know, I got in. I don't know how I got in, but I got in. You know what I mean? And uh, the very first day that, you know, I got in the foundation, ever since then, I think I've probably worked over 200 cases so far, at least five oh, wow. interviews and cases. Um, I am a board member um, and some other stuff too. You know, I'm a Spanish division director. So, you know, I, uh, I, have, a, I have a division that I'm in charge of. And so I get to you know, nurture a new Spanish uh, generation of investigators from all over the world, uh, about 28 of them, and uh, get to see what type of good work that they do on Central America, Latin America, and Spain as well. Yeah, that's awesome. We need more interpreters out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do interpret as well. I'm, uh, I am involved with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, so I still volunteer. All right, thank you for the service. Military. Uh, you know, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I did spend time in the Marine Corps uh, years ago, <laughs> almost 20 years ago. 
Uh, and then so I do um, volunteer with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. That is the volunteer side of the actual Coast Guard. We wear the uniforms. I've been a unit commander. Uh, I'm an instructor, and I also interpret for them on missions. So if there's a mission, you know, I can get deployed to them. I can I get flown out to Florida. You know, I can fly in helicopters. I get uh, transport to ships, do transmissions. Uh, uh, I translate and interpret documents for the government if I'm if I'm ever needed. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, like you say, you're a man of many hats. So it's like, where do I begin? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's, I don't think it's like um, many hats when you think about it. I think for me, it's just more of a life of servitude, you know, right, because, right. you know, I was in the military and, and for the longest time when I got out, you know, years ago, I was in from 2003 to 2006, you know, I got out a year earlier, I was injured. Right. And so for all those years, you know, I was doing contract work, government work, and um, and, and that was okay. But, you know, I just wanted more. Um, and so this is more of a life of servitude and helping other people. And that's what I enjoy the most. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like, I'm surprised I'm part of Warren Lee's Foundation. <laughs> you don't want to, you know, interview well, me. It, that's awesome. Well, no, I mean, you're awesome, too. You're a great asset okay. to the foundation. You love, you, you're, you're sweet, you're kind, you're gentle, you listen. You have some really good report writing skills. You're always in tune. You're intuitive. You. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I you're a perfect. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, but you're excelling at it. So that's the important thing. That's true. Yeah, you are excelling at it. <laughs> so do you mind, oh, do you, do you mind sharing uh, some of your um, profound paranormal experiences with us? Profound. I know you try on you. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, I think for me, um, that's always a, a, a slippery slope for me. Um, you know, I don't, I try not to use profound very much because I think every case that I work is profound in its way. Oh, okay, uh, every yeah. case, every case is, is unique. And, uh, you know, the most important thing is just like getting the satisfaction of helping out a client. Um, and I, I would say for me, um, a profound case was maybe about two years ago, there was a young girl, a young, young baby. She's probably like six right now. Hmm. Um, she was four years old. She was complaining to her parents that there was a young boy that was bothering her at night and it was scaring her. You know, and, you know, she didn't like the way he looked and, you know, the family was alarmed and they were troubled and, um, you know, they would see footsteps, you know, they, was, they would hear footsteps, they would see shadows, you know, they would see this kid. And so they automatically assumed that it was something negative, right? And so when we got there, you know, we investigated, uh, we got down to the root cause, you know, uh, underlying issues, what happened, how it happened, who, what, what, who, and what, where, and why. And then it came to find out that the family had mentioned that when they had first moved in, there was a little burial spot in the background, in the backyard, that they had covered over with a shed. <laughs> but before they did that, they had to lay some foundation down for that outdoor shed. And in that shed, uh, in that, under that shed, the ground, there was... I guess two baseballs, some blackjack, and 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 a Tonka truck buried. I guess there was uh, a young boy that had lived there many years ago on that land, and and he passed away or whatever. Oh, wow. I'm not too sure what it was, but they took those toys and they threw them away. And so, as soon as they got rid of that, I asked them, "How soon after this happened? The, after you got rid of the toys, did the activity start happening?" And they're like, "Well, you know." It's been going on for about a year now. We've moved here, but it's been like a week and a half after. So finally, you know, it came to light. So, you know, the young girl, the, the child was also complaining that the boy was bothering her when she was outside playing with her swing, talking about toy, toy, toy. And so come to find out that we surmised that because of those toys, you know, that's when the activity started. So we went back to where the area was. Um, you know, we obviously couldn't dig in the foundation because it was cemented. But what we did is on the other side of the shed, we dug up a hole, right? We put two balls back and another truck back. We went out to the store. We bought some stuff, right? We bought some toys. We buried it with, you know, with the land. And we told the kid, hey, you know, we are so sorry. 
you know, they didn't mean to hurt you, your feelings, here's your toys to play with again. Um, and after that happened, we blessed the house. We salted all the doors, the corners. You know, we blessed the family with sage and and uh, we did Palo Santo and, and we did, uh, uh, what you may call it, uh, rose water. Uh, and up until this day, they haven't had any activity. So I was happy that the, ha that the child was no longer scared and could go through her life without having to see this little boy. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you were able to help. You think maybe that child may have some gifts too? The, the what? I'm sorry, the what? That child may have got just, you know, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I, I think maybe... Wondering. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I think maybe there was just a misinterpretation and a misunderstanding of, of what was going on. You know, I think that, um, you know, the boy was, you know, that, that was his land. He's been there for a long time. And oh, people right, move yeah. in and they move his toys. And I think maybe he was just sad. So he saw another kid and he figured, well, you know, since my toys are gone, let me go try to play with this kid who is within my age range. Um, and, you know, obviously kids don't understand that stuff and they get scared. The family got scared. Oh, yeah. The family <laughs> automatically thought it was something evil. And I go, no, no, no. It's more than likely not anything evil. It almost is nothing evil. You know, it's that's only like a 1% chance that you're dealing with something evil, so to speak. It was just a kid who was there. He didn't want, he didn't want to cross over. You know, that was his land. Those were his toys. He liked roaming the neighborhood. You know, he did what he wanted to, but he wanted his toys. He was missing his toys. He felt sad. And so I think maybe that uh, helped him out. You know, it was the intent of replacing his toys so that he can have something to play with so that he didn't feel alone. And so that he wouldn't bother the child anymore. Okay, that's good. And that yeah. kind of leads to my next question. Um, what's the difference from a demonic or let's say like a spirit or a ghost? So, you know, the, the, the term demonic, right? Mm -hmm. Demonic is something that's never walked this earth. It is in inhuman spirit. You know, you don't have to believe in God. You don't have to believe in devils. You don't have to believe in angels and all that stuff. But, you know, demonic entities normally are things, according to the Christian belief system, Abrahamic belief systems, are energies, demons, that have never walked the earth. So, you know, these are fallen angels, so to speak. And so they manifest themselves in different ways. A lot of times they can manifest themselves as, as a known person or a known loved one that you've lost or whatever. But you know um it's really it's highly rare that you'll get a demon and then uh ghosts are in my opinion my interpretation are you know people who have crossed over who are like the in-between right of, of of the the universe of the parallels the planes and so they're here because they're not ready to cross over or they just don't want to cross over because they're humans you know they're human spirits so they have free will and so ghosts are you know you can communicate with them you know you can get responses and i think spirits are more of a, a stamp in time like you go to an old victorian mansion and it's an imprint of what was and you know there's that energy there that you can see and that you can hear but you can't communicate with it and it can't communicate with you it doesn't see you it's it just is it's there you know so that's my right. interpretation of what a, a spirit is Yes, spirit, yeah, 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 more like an impress. What are your thoughts, though? Well, it's what pretty much think? the same, I think, like what you yeah. explained. Mm -hmm. um, I think a demonic might have lower energy than it. Like, let's say, angels. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've dealt with both as well. Yeah. And more, I, I'd rather communicate with angels any day than demonic. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd rather no. be involved. I'd rather be involved in life work all the time and, and, and deal with, you know, spirits and ghosts and have to deal with, you know, all that negative energy, you know, but the truth is, you know, you know, and then negative energy, right? That's another word that we often misuse. Yeah. A, a lot of people often think of negative energy and they say, oh, it's a demon. No, you know, negative energy can be your grandfather that was an asshole in life and now he's an asshole in death. You know what I mean? And he's just bothering you. You know, he's stubborn. He doesn't want to get rid of everything. Uh, he doesn't want to go. And he's, you know, maybe uh, tossing the knives around or, you know, he's causing mischief around the house, you know, but, you know, it, it does it does get a little overwhelming at times because you're dealing with a stubborn spirit. And I think that's, I think that's for me, I'd rather deal with a, a negative energy, so to speak, than, 
a human spirit because human spirits they have free will right so they're like you and i god gave us free will so when you die you know you have free will a lot of i won't go to the whole you know uh theology behind it but there's a lot of misinterpretations that the people will be like well you know to be to be a part of god you know to be absent from the body is to be present in god that there's a mm-hmm. biblical verse like that and that's often misused um and yeah, that's it doesn't true. mean and, and it doesn't mean that it you know to be was it to be absent from the body is to be present in god yeah i think that's what the term is but a lot of people misuse that and it doesn't mean what people think it means you know from my experience and, and what i've seen and what i've experienced is that yeah you know human energy human form it's not a demon you know it's not you know it's not everything is demons you know and i think that's where the the disconnect comes from when it comes to like the christian belief system right it's like just because you can read the bible yeah. doesn't mean you know how to interpret it you know and a lot of those things are not uh, you know a lot of the things that you say or you interpret from the bible are not necessarily what you think they mean so unless you studied um hermeneutics which is a fancy word for biblical interpretation then hmm. i advise people stop trying to interpret that. the bible but yeah you know unless you know how to interpret the bible and you study that and you actually have the real education stop trying to interpret the bible uh because you're probably going to get it wrong because <laughs> one 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 biblical verse is not going to like the truth is you know 2000 year old church tradition you know will always out trump a 500 year old protestant belief system and that's my opinion you know yeah you know, i love my protestant brothers and sisters and nothing against them you know i grew up pentecostal and baptist but there was just a lot of weird things um, that i didn't agree with and so when i became a catholic priest you know i fell in love with the traditions i fell in love and and i found my place so yeah yeah, yeah, I also grew up Baptist, so I totally understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's it's definitely a lot. It's it's definitely a lot, you know. It's like you know, we grew up with all these narratives that have been taught to us and then as we get older we find ourselves in a conundrum where we're like, you know, what do I believe? What do I believe? You know, and what I tell people is like, you know, believe your heart, you know, believe what you feel in your heart and and believe, you know, your relationship with with your creator. You know, so much we focus on religion and it's like well you're not this religion or you're not this you're not that and there's over 3000 religions in the world mm-hmm. you know uh, just because i believe mine's is you know it's my personal truth my subjective truth truth doesn't mean that everyone else has to agree with me and i'm certainly not going to be dismissive of anyone else's belief systems because that's wrong you know that's that's right. not love that's not love that's not light that's not compassion that's not mercy you know that's not living a, a life according to to Christ, so to speak, being hateful towards one another and in disrespect and belief systems because you don't align with them. Come on now. We're better than that. We got to be better than that. Right. Like we have many relations by the same God. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think so. You know, I, you know, you can, there can be many different names, you know, for the same God, you know, uh, and <coughs> it's all interpretation. And I tell people, you know, just follow your path, you know, follow what you feel in your heart is right. Follow what you feel in your gut is right. You know, and, and and I'm sorry to to those who have been hurt by the church, and I'm sorry for those who have been hurt by religion. But that's what I try to do. That's what I try to teach. That's my whole message is to break uh, to to break that mold, break that trend, mm-hmm. and help people understand that not all of us are like that. You know, and not all of us are you know Bible thumpers. You know, because that's a that's a tricky that's a that's a slippery slope. You know, you got people that are just like, well, I'm a Bible thumping Christian. Good. What does that mean? Just because you know mm-hmm. how to read the Bible, just mm-hmm. because you can throw a scripture or a verse, doesn't mean anything. You know, you're just spewing hate. You're just repeating what some guy in the pulpit told you to do. But that's the same guy that's 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 banging five different women after church. You know what I mean? Excuse the phrase. Or like, church. yeah, yeah. Or like speaking in tongues. I always, yeah. I never understood that speaking in tongues. So you know, the the speaking in tongues is is one of the spiritual gifts that God has yeah. given to us, biblically speaking. <laughs> You know, and 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 my interpretation, and for my studies, and my and and you know what what I teach as a you know, doctor of, of divinity, is that mm-hmm. you know the gift of tongues is a very special gift, you know, and there are a lot of people within the Protestant church system that believe that it, you can ask for that specific gift. You know, God is going to give you the gift that He feels is necessary for you, um, and so I, I find a lot of misuse in. The talking of tongues because it seems like everybody speaks in tongues 
And, and there's no doubt, but you know, a lot of that speaking in tongues is an emotional reaction to the music or the message that's going on. There isn't a spiritual reaction, you know? So we have to understand that when we go to church and, and we pray and, and we do whatever it is that you practice, you know, whatever service you go to, you know, you have good music playing and you feel good. You shouldn't be feeling good. You know what I mean? Not in that sense, not in the physical sense. Yeah. You know, I just missed that an, part. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're having an emotional, you're having an emotional reaction to the music because it makes you feel good and you're dancing and all that. But that's not true. That's not true Christianity. You know, when you go, you go to church, you humble yourself before God, you know, you absorb everything and you let the music work in you and, and you let the words minister to you. And yeah, you're going to feel good, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a spiritual connection that you need. Mm-hmm. Often what I find is throughout all of the churches, you know, even within, uh, you know, Catholicism, you know, which is a different thing itself because Catholicism, the Eucharist, yeah. <laughs> there is a connection. You know, there is supposed to be uh, an emotional connection because you're, you're communing and you're receiving the body of Christ, which is a very beautiful thing. You know, it's one yeah. of the sacraments. It's one of the most beautiful sacraments. You know what I mean? And yes, you're supposed to feel something. But I often find that within the other church uh, denominations, there isn't that connection. You know, there is only that connection with music and you feel good and that's all you're doing. And so when it comes to speaking in tongues, going back to that, that's what it is. It's just an, it's just an emotional response to the music, right? And then it's an influence, right? You have a lot of people going around, you speak them, blah, 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 whatever, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, my friend is talking in tongues. Let me go ahead and start talking in tongues. It, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. I remember you know, one time, <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember one That's time okay. I was going to church with my uh, former sister-in-law, and they were trying, even praying over me so that I might receive that speech in tongues. I'm like, I don't really like to do that. So they're still trying to shove it on me. I'm like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, yeah, I, there's a lot of misconception. Kind of well, you know, and that's there's a lot of misconceptions. Or like when you go to church, right, and they pray for you and they want you to fall back. And they're like, oh, you received the Holy Spirit and you fall back. You know, as a kid growing up, uh, I would say that maybe looking back now, it could have been a spiritual response because I was really involved in ministry. But I, I do want to say that most of it was actually an emotional response because, especially during youth ministry, all of my friends are falling back. They're receiving the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to feel like that, too. I want to feel good. And so, you know, you're there and you're praying and all of a sudden you get a little lightheaded and you fall back. Okay, cool. But was that really the Holy Spirit? No, it probably wasn't. It was just probably an emotional response. And I think that's one thing that we have to be really careful with in churches today. Um, a lot of it is, is an emotional response, you know. It's like, um, I hate when you try to force something on you. It's like, yeah, it's like don't force me. It's like, turn away. I, I don't want to talk in tongues. I don't want to talk in tongues. You know what I mean? I, I think maybe I've done it once. And it wasn't for me. I didn't like it. I didn't feel right. Uh, but I don't think I did it because of whatever the Holy Spirit. I think I did it because everybody else around me was doing it. But I think everyone... I'm kind of nervous about it because it's kind of like channeling. Yeah, I know yeah. I just channel. It just makes me nervous. Well, you got to be careful, though, you know, yeah, especially when, like... it, when, you're, when, when you're talking in that type of spiritual <laughs> gift, right? Because, you know, it, it also states biblically, biblically that if you have the gift of tongues, there should be someone next to you being able to discern it. So right. if you have a whole church of people, uh, a thousand people speaking in tongues, that is, that can be a little overwhelming. And that can also make you question. It's like, I don't think a thousand people are going to have the gift of tongues. They shouldn't mm-hmm. because each spiritual gift is, is specific and not everyone should have, and not everyone's going to have the same gift and not everyone, not everyone will get a spiritual gift. You know, that may not be your spiritual gift. You know, you may have another gift that's not even in the Bible and it can be the gift of uh, ministry. It can be the gift of feeding the poor. It can be the gift of, you know, uh, going to different countries and building wells. So we just have to be careful with that type right. of stuff. Are there gifts of discernment? I know I have that. Yeah, discernment. I believe I have that as an exorcist, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I question myself. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, as 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 the faithful followers, you know, we do have to question our faith, and that's a good thing. You know, we can stand firm in what we believe in, but you know, we we question ourselves. You know, and that's when God is like, "Yeah, you know, I got you." You know, this is you're questioning yourself, but then there's always a moment of clarity that God's like, "I got you. Don't worry about it." You know, you're good to go. I think it's normal as human beings to, to have some form of doubt. 
Right, it's true. Or yeah. and the open mind. Yeah. I always well, try yeah. to keep an open mind about things. <laughs> You have to, and that's one thing. Yeah, especially about, the paranormal, and yeah, you, know, you have to. Have, you have to have an open mind, right? Because like twenty years ago, you know, growing up, you would tell me that I'd be an actual, you know, paranormal investigator. Because this is this is a ministry. This is a calling. You know what I mean? It's it one is, thing. Yeah. It's it's one thing to hunt ghosts and search for evidence. And it's another thing to actually be an investigator and researcher and help clients that are in need. You know, the right. I think there's a there's a lot of uh, misconceptions that a ghost hunter is an investigator. No, it's not, and vice versa. Um, I commend. I have friends. You know, we have mutual friends that go out and that mm -hmm. they investigate, and that's cool. You know what I mean? I I applaud that. I applaud them for that. You know, uh, being a, a hunter, so to speak. You know, gives you the opportunity to to learn your tools and use your equipment and and catch good evidence and and document it, and that's a good thing. You know what I mean? But if you're right. hunting ghosts and you think that you know you're able to deal with the darkest of the darkest energy, you, you're probably not going to be able to. You know, if if all you do is just hunt, so to speak, right? And right. you don't you don't have a concept and understanding of helping clients or family. Yeah, you know, that can be a little dangerous thing, you know, and I, I've I've known and I, and oh, yeah. I have yeah. friends that have started off as ghost hunting and now they don't really care about it. You know, they're all about helping clients, you know, and, and that's the thing for me. I don't I don't care about the paranormal. All of that other stuff, all of that evidence you can show me, that's cool. I, I understand that there's energy around. Right. And so if you go looking for it, yeah, you get a little hit on your EMF detector. You might be able to pick up something as, you know, as an EVP recording. But I'm already cognizant that that's around. I know that those things are around me, you know, and the paranormal for me is actually kind of normal, so to speak. I, I don't think too much about it. So when people are like, oh, I caught this, I caught that. That's a really good find. And I commend you, you know, for being excited about it. But it doesn't do anything for me. You know, I'll question it. Okay, cool. That's nice. How'd you get it? Who, right. what, when, where, and why? What piece of equipment? What was there? What was the temperature like? What was the moon phase like? You know, what was the, you know, was there electricity on? What was this? You know, was it your camera? You know, I'm always going to have questions. Um, it's the, the pieces of evidence that I can't explain that I'm like, all right, now, now we got something going on. You know, it's not it's a GDP. A, it's not either a way, it's um, Yeah. Why do you suppose the weather might have something to do, or like the moon face or whatever, might have something to do with any paranormal activity? I, I think the, the energy in the Earth's atmosphere, you know, uh, with the positive ions and all that, uh, does have an influence on the energy around us. And, and so I do think all that uh, plays into effect uh, our environment, you know, because energy spirits, they like to manifest using energy. And so if there's energy around yeah. you, either if it's atmospheric energy or if it's electronic energy or even us, you know, that energy is vital. And, I don't mess with our TV and, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that energy uh, is important for that entity, the spirit, you know, to, to manifest itself. So, yeah, energy is always important. Um, you know, even the moon phases, you know, the moon affects the waves of the ocean. I mean, think about that. Mm -hmm. Think about how the Earth's gravitational pull affects us. You know, if we didn't have, if we weren't in orbit, you know what I mean? We'd be flipping up and down like scrambled eggs going back and forth. You know what I mean? If we didn't have, you know, the protection on the earth from the sun's UV rays, you know, we'd be like fried green tomatoes. Oh, know? yeah. You know, all of that, all of that, all of that wonderful, magnificent natural energy is highly important. You know, even energy, right? Like when it's sunny outside, right? What do we do? We, it's sunny. We're cold. We go out there. It revitalizes us. We feel good, right? When it's raining, it's time for chicken soup. I'm kind of sad. I'm kind of depressed. Maybe, you know, I just don't want to deal with anybody. You know, it, when you think about it, you know, everything around us, you know, the energy can have an effect on us. You know? Yeah, that's true. You know. And it can also be our energy as well. Like, um, yeah. what's that called? There's a term for it. Psychokinesis? Uh, telekinesis or psychokinesis or... It's uh, where we as move an energy with our mind. Or oh, tele tele oh, it's telekinesis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are those? It, well, it, it, I mean, I think it's a, yeah, there's telekinesis, psychokinesis. Yeah. Uh, uh, no good person. Uh, uh, Mich uh, 
Catherine Cirillo's. Uh, she's a person that I that I know, a uh, really wonderful person. Um, she used to be part of the foundation, and uh, she does her own thing now. But she used to do these wonderful videos of like telekinetic energy. She would go and she, she would. yeah, 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 yeah. She would like do these wonderful things, and it's amazing. Like you know the type of energy and abilities that people have. I, I certainly don't have that type of ability. I think I might have if I practice, but I really don't. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think anything is possible. I mean, anything is possible. I, I, I do think that because as human beings, we only use a certain percentage of our brain that I think if we unlock the full potential of our brain, we'd be able to uh, do a lot more. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'll be honest with you. Like if I could use 100% of my brain, like my wife wants me to, I probably wouldn't get in as much trouble as I should. But, you know, if I can use all of my brain, you know, I'm pretty sure life will be a lot more simpler for all of us. <laughs> right. It's like ESP. It's like, you yeah. know, um, think the same thoughts or like ESP. Yeah. Are you hearing yeah. anything? Yeah. And I'm not sure where that de derives from. I know there's a frontal cortex and there's different parts of the brain. I'm not too sure where. Yeah, I think those abilities, you know, um, if tapped into our brain correctly, we'd be able to do those things a lot more and probably a lot more powerful. And like something I, I I'll be thinking of someone in the hall or there's gonna be a test or something. I'll be yeah, oh, yeah. thinking about you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like oh you it's, know? it's kinda cool though. It is kinda yeah. cool though. How to share you but Yeah. I love it. It's How to cool. share my friends sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. It's like uh you know, like when sometimes I'm my wife and I were like, oh, we're thinking tacos. You know what I mean? Or like, right. you know, we can finish each other's sentences. So that's kind of cool. I think so you don't have to ask what's for dinner. You just know. Well, yeah. And, and actually, that's one of the messages I just got. What's for dinner? I go, I don't know. What's for dinner? <laughs> I don't know. Not my turn to cook tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, well, cooking is good. I like cooking. It's fun. So, yeah, I mean, I mind, but... <laughs> yeah. what's that? Yeah, I don't mind a or me. <laughs> yeah, no, cooking is fun. You know, you got to have, you got to have some hobbies, you know, you've got to oh, do yeah, some you stuff. Do out, you got to do some stuff outside of the paranormal. Like I like to golf. Yeah. I like, I like to mountain climb. I like to go hiking. I used to go. Yeah. Golf is fun. It's a hard sport. I miss, it. I miss yeah, golf. Yeah. No, it's good. It's, it's good. Cause it gets you focused and it gets you centered. You know, yeah, I, then I, you're I, outside. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you know, when it comes to this type of work, you, I, I want to be what is called front sight focused. You know, it's a, it's a term that we use in the military, using your front sight to aim in on the target. So I want to be front sight focused whenever I do an investigation and I'm working on a case. You know, and it's important it, it, that it balance and everything. Yeah, you have to have a balance. You know, it kills me that there are people that all they ever do is paranormal, 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 par and like and maybe for my wife, it seems like I do that a lot, but I, you know but there are people that are just so involved with this and every 24 hours a day it's paranormal paranormal yes. paranormal videos paranormal books paranormal tours paranormal this paranormal that you know catching evidence looking for this hunting this looking for a place to go it's and that's cool exhausting. yeah it's exhausting you know what i mean give yourself time to to enjoy it like you know for me um I, I did a, an event a few months ago with one of our members who just passed away. Uh, say a prayer for one of our members who just passed away. Uh, he passed oh, away with cancer. Yeah. And um, he, uh, he wanted to investigate the Beacon Theater in Hopewell, Virginia. And so I've never investigated a theater, but that was the best time of my life. You know, we, we were able to go and investigate with him and his family and the rest of their team. Uh, and it was a wonderful experience, you know. It's something uh, about theaters. I don't know why it's freaks me out, even though it might not be haunted. It's something about theaters. Well, I love theaters. <laughs> I, I love movie theaters. That's actually one of my favorite hobbies. I, I have a monthly movie club membership that I that I get tickets to. All right, now I've got like seven tickets built up already. But I used to love going to the movies all of the time. I would go to the movies once a week. Oh, nice. Buy myself a big tub of popcorn and just watch a movie. You know, one time one I was watching out here and I had my leg pulled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love, you know, I, love movies. Theater. I, I love movies. I love movies. I love theaters in general. Theaters, I think, were I always need to go back to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, 
there's like a, a theater here in town. It's a comedy theater. I, I've heard some stories about it, but I, I don't know if it's haunted. Maybe I should go find out. Maybe we can oh, do an investigation yeah. or something. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> oh, speaking yeah. of ways, what, what's on your bucket list? I look location. My bucket list, although I live near Alcatraz, I haven't gone to Alcatraz. Um, I, I want to go. Yeah, I, I want to go to Alcatraz. I've been to the Winchester Mystery House several times. I love it there. Um, there is, a, is it the USS Hornet? There's the USS Hornet here oh, yeah. in, in Alameda that I, I actually, because I'm part of the Coast Guard, I can actually get on there for free and I can bring oh, the nice. team on, but I keep on forgetting to tell the team. And I'm like, and then everyone is so busy. Um, and then, so the USS Hornet would be another one. Um, I tell you what, though, I'm going to be going to the USS Salem July 1st of next year. So oh, nice. that's going to be, well, I mean, maybe by then I'll have my first battleship experience over here in town. But uh, that'll be my first. Uh, I would say it's in your area, right? Yeah, yeah. It's by Alameda, the USS Hornet. Okay. Um, but then the USS Salem is in Massachusetts. It's about. I think 45 minutes away from Salem, Massachusetts, which I'm excited for. That is actually one of my cities on my bucket list. Uh, I've, I've gone to New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I, I want to get some property out there. I love NOLA. I love everything about it. I love That's the people. That's where my late husband's family from, New Orleans. Oh, I've never I love, been there. I, I, well, it's called New Orleans. You know, New Orleans. New Orleans. How do you say it wrong? New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> You know, uh, I love it out there. It's it's magical. It's whimsical. Uh, the people, the culture, the food is beautiful. I love it. It reminds me growing up in New York and my Afro Caribbean culture. Have you tried the uh, Have you tried the gumbo soup? I remember right. Oh my oh, gosh! Gumbo? Did I have some gumbo? <laughs> I did have some gumbo, and I had some alligator. Kale. It's all right. Yeah, I'm not really that. a seafood um, cut. He's right. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, that you were supposed to be when you came up a few weeks ago. We were supposed to get some seafood. Oh and no! Like, oh, you don't like seafood. Well, next time you come up and I didn't plan it well. Well, next time you come up, I mean, it's it's, it's only an hour flight, right? It's it's uh -huh. the chip. The, the tickets are cheap. They're like a hundred bucks, I think, from yeah. where you're at. So next time you're up here in town, we'll go get some good food and you know, we'll, yeah, you know, we'll hang out. We'll do it. some investigation. But I had some alligator tails. Uh, I had some. I had some gumbo. I had. I'll uh, pass an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so good. Um, and I went to Myrtle Plantation where they filmed the interview with the vampire. Oh, nice. That was epic. Uh, my wife and I, we went. That was the most epic thing for a reason. That was it. It was like the most epic thing ever, like beyond reason. It was just so magical. Just the history, the property. I mean, I love everything about New Orleans. So, like, you talk about bucket lists. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe, um, let's see, what else? What, what's on your bucket list, though? Uh, same place I went my son in New Orleans. Um, New York. New York. There. Okay, so I can't say, well, I can't say New York because I'm from New York. I have family in New York City. So. You know, so I can go back home whenever I want. I have an apartment there waiting for me. I can go back whenever I want. I just have it because my dad's always busy working. Um, I tell you what, though, um, uh, international travel is on the list. Uh, yeah. I, def I definitely want to go hang out with Chris in Peru or uh, wherever his excursions take him. And I definitely want to go across the pond and uh, meet some of our foundation members in Europe, Scotland. Like I want to meet artist Lana. I want to meet... Uh, you know, uh, Katie, you know, um, Cleo, sorry, Cleo, out oh, in yeah. New Zealand. I want to meet her in New Zealand. Uh, I want to meet my sister, uh, Kareen Engelberg. They're all part of the foundation and Jax and, you know, everyone else. Uh, Ian is out there. So I definitely want to go across the pond uh, and spend some time in Europe, hopefully like two weeks or so. That'd be nice, you know, and then maybe go to the Haunted Isles of Scotland. You know what I mean? Um, and, and check out those uh, those castles out there. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Castles. <laughs> Castle, castles. Castles are cool. Castles are cool. Like I someone was selling a castle for like a million dollars. Like, oh, if only I could buy a castle. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> but did you know you can actually buy a piece of property overseas? You can I buy like one that. you can buy one square foot of land and be hmm. considered a lord or a queen or a lord or whatever or a duchess of that land. So you can oh, buy wow. yourself 
one square foot of land by a castle and you, and you can be like oh you know queen nikki ray <laughs> queen nikki <laughs> or, or duchess okay. nikki I'll take it. you know what it's, a, it's an official title it's kind of cool <laughs> yeah 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 it's an official title yeah totally. <laughs> yeah oh there's another place called a sally house i don't know if you heard of it yeah uh what was that last one it's called a sally house Oh, that's the one down in LA, I think, right? Uh, the Southern California area. Mm-hmm. I, I did see. I was something. just close to Zoe. It was so close. But, oh, oh what, ha- what happened? Why did you go? I just put it right here. Oh. <sighs> oh, they, they were they not doing tours anymore, or what? Um, yeah, they stopped doing tours. And, uh, you know, Denise Primar, she is my guest. She actually trained my cousin there. That was over there. So speaking of small world. <laughs> That's a small world. Oh, man. Small world indeed. I, I saw an episode of, oh, my God. I think it was the Holzer Files. It was the Holzer Files where they went to the Sally house. And um, um, let's see. Uh, they went to the Sally house. It was the Holzer Files. And not only that, though, they, um, they had some pretty, pretty, daunting evidence it was like pretty cool evidence that i saw there um i i think uh what's his name the the tall david schrader i think david yeah. schrader actually yeah, got attacked on, yeah i think david schrader uh got attacked on that show and uh but you know what i you know uh, yeah he got pushed or something like that yeah and, and you know and that's the thing like and that's the dangers with you know with uh, the paranormal you know it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a negative or an evil thing but it's just something trying to get your attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm not willing to die for it, though. That's that's one thing. Not willing to die for it, you know. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's just crazy how she, my uh, Denise was turning my husband. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 paranormal field is just like it's fun. You know what I mean? It, it can be fun. Uh, when you're not dealing with clients, you know, if, if you're going out and you want to explore certain things, you want to explore different things, different buildings, you know, haunted right, places. I was going to ask you, um, would you rather do a story or do like, do like cases or like both? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm up to here with cases right now. Um, so <laughs> I've got quite a bit on my plate and, and, and each case um, brings something unique uh, and it's different uh, and can be overwhelming. Uh, but you have to know your boundaries and you have to know when to kind of approach those cases. Uh, and you have to give yourself time to breathe in between. Um, and you got to be in a good mindset. You know what I mean? Uh, but for me, I think at this point in time, you know what I mean? As much as I love the cases and I love helping out the clients, I certainly don't like the activity or the experiences that they're going through. I don't like that at all. Okay. You know, that's what I don't like. So, so I hope people don't misinterpret it. You know, I love the fact that we get to help people all the time you know i don't like the circumstances surrounding the cases but i do love the fact that we can try to make a difference and educate them and teach them but i do think for me um i don't mind uh exploring you know what i mean but you know my my method of exploring is just to go sit down and experience it and you know i don't mind either i was just at the mind yeah, over just, there. yeah just maybe just like take an evp recorder and see what happens yeah. if i see something but I mean, oh, and I even and, and even exploring though that. like and even there for like exploring for me, it's like when I go to a place, I'm going to go for a reason. You know what I mean? Like to, to sit here and, and, you know, the truth is that a lot of these places that are supposedly haunted, they do have spirits that are trapped there, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't want to go on their, <laughs> uh, at their expense of entertainment and be like, well, I'm paying 20 bucks to, 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 to bother you, you know, mm-hmm. treat you like an animal in the zoo. You know, if I'm going to go, I'm going to pay my 20 bucks and I'm going to quietly try to help them cross over. So that way, you know, there's no more yeah. spirits in here. But I don't think that'll be good for business. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. sad, you know, want to be help or can't be help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I've gone to the Haunted Museum in uh, Las Vegas, Zach Vegas Haunted Museum. Oh, um, that's on my list, too. You know, it was a good experience. Uh, to be the to be honest with you, I think the only thing that happened was a young girl from Australia who started touching the Dybbuk box, and then as soon as she got out into the room to the hallway, 
she got really dizzy. She passed out. Maybe it could have been a paid actor. Who knows? But, uh, you, know, uh, <laughs> you know, so the Haunted Museum is cool. You know, there's a lot of uh, haunted objects there. But I didn't see anything. I didn't feel anything. You know, maybe like a... But the thing is, there's so much energy there. You know, there's so much energy there. And, you know, you have millions of yeah, guests. Yeah, there would be you, there's, there. there's, million, there's millions of guests that go there every year. And so combined collectively, their energy imprint's going to leave something there. And it can manifest stuff. You know, um, half the stuff that yeah, is in that... Half the stuff that's in that museum, it may be haunted. But uh, to me, it just... Uh, it didn't have an effect on me. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm not a psychic. Because I am not a psychic. So... I have a feeling mm -hmm. it might set me, so I better be prepared beforehand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be prepared, though. So, like, what, what, what do you like to do? So, like, what is your preferred piece of equipment on an investigation? I was just going to ask you that. Um, oh, that's my own ESP, ESP. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, my own body, uh, intuition. Yeah. My psychic abilities and a reporter. Yeah. And yeah, I, I like so. the lips. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, you know, I think definitely most importantly, your your body, you know, is your tool. You know, your body is a tool to conduit. You know, you go in, you listen, you stay focused, you know, but you always ground yourself and protect yourself, you know, when you go in and even when you come out and you set boundaries, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once I do all that, I, I think for me, I, I, I keep it simple. You know, I like the REM pod or... Uh, Philip, if you're listening, I'm sorry. They're called cat balls. Cat balls. You know? <laughs> yeah, little cat balls. I don't, I don't know what they're scientifically called, but I like little cat balls. Um, and I like using the like infrared thermal. I have a little okay. thermal attachment, uh, and I like taking pictures to see if I could find any anomalous shapes within, you know, the different uh, color shades. But yeah, mm -hmm. I keep it simple. I don't do the. I don't. I'm not into much to, to the the itc that type of stuff or, or scrying i don't do that you know i don't i don't care too much for the estes method that's not for me right. yeah definitely no ouija boards right i'm done messing yeah. with that i mess with it when i'm younger but like, okay no more <laughs> yeah 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 you know and, and that's the thing you know not that you know, there's a there's a big misinterpretation like when i say don't use ouija boards like Spirit communication using a Ouija board is, you know, almost the same thing as 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 the EVP. It's like EVP. Right. You know, you're you're using equipment to communicate with spirit, right? But you know, sometimes you just don't know what's coming through or what's on the other end. So if you know if you're going to use the Ouija board, just be careful. You know, find someone that knows how to use it better than you. But more importantly, better better advice: don't use it because you don't know what's coming through. Yeah, you know, some people can use it and nothing will happen. Or some people will use it in 20, 30 years down the, down the road. That's when the things start happening. You know, the energy is... You open spirits, yourself up. So. Yeah, the spirits and all that stuff, they don't confide. They don't, they're not confide into our space and time continuum. So, you know, what may be 100 years for us can be only a day for them. So we just have to That's be careful. True, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know for a fact... Um, I was attacked by uh, someone else's spirit uh, attachment. I was asking all kinds of questions. He yeah. cut all the way across from the UK and just attacked me. So there's yeah. no space for time. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and you know, yeah. that's the thing. You know, <laughs> I believe that now. <laughs> the hard yeah, way, I believe the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have two Ouija boards in my closet that are locked away. I've never used them. They were gifts to me. That's fine. I have a, a good friend of mine, like my twinsy. I call her my twinsy. She's uh, my best friend. Um, she got me a birthday present earlier this year, and it is a little. Um, oh my gosh, it's up there. It is a little design, right? It's an encased Ouija board with dragonflies. Oh well. Wow. She got it for, my, for my birthday. I love it. It's beautiful. It's hanging on my wall right there. Yeah, you know, and yeah, people were like, "Well, you know." I can use a Ouija board and nothing will happen to me. Keep on thinking that. Keep on thinking that. Because just because you're grounded, just because you're protected, just because we believe in something yeah. doesn't mean you can't get attacked. You know, it 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 baffles That's my true. mind when I see all these TikTokers and YouTubers who are like, Well, I'm protected by God and nothing can happen to me. 
until you get tossed across the room 20 feet like Joe Frankie did. Yeah, he believes in God. Yeah. You know? We have faith, but things can happen. You know, just be cognizant. These are these are still energies that are, 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 are not on our plane. You know what I mean? So anything can happen. Who knows what type of abilities that they have as well on the other side. Well, you point it to be a uh, well rounded and spiritually protected. What's that? It's what it's important to be um, well rounded and spiritually protected 24 7. Yeah, you got it. You be. never know. Yeah, I mean, even, even in everyday life, you know, you wake up, you know, it's positive affirmations, you know, thank you for a wonderful day. You know, you, you, you speak positivity <laughs> into the air, it's going to go out, it's going to come back. I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, in, in affirmation, positive affirmation. I believe that whatever, whatever you spit out, you know, um, and they can attack us when yeah. we least suspect it or in our yeah. weakest moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, and, that, and that's the most important thing. It's like, you know, you're positive, you ground yourself, you know, and, and you try to be positive throughout the day, but you know, and even then like going out there, you know, if you're an empath, you know, you can feel people's energy, you know, these things can, can bring you down, you know, energy and it's not necessarily oh, yeah, spirits. <laughs> Yeah, it's not necessarily, you know, spirits. It's just energy. You know, the energy that that bad juju out there can can definitely have an effect on you. And, right, and, I and should be in a room full so, of you know? people, and I should have stayed there long because I feel their energies. I would have to I step be, out. I, you know, sometimes I, I can be in a room full of people, and I just I don't feel right. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Did I? It was for all the pieces of fresh hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're almost uh, towards the um, the hour. Is there anything else you like to share with us? There we go. Well, I mean, you know, you know, you know. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, um, thank you. Know, you. It's always for fun being us. on these. It's always fun being on these shows. I mean, I, you know, what I tell people is like, if you're going to be in this field, you know, if you're going to be an investigator, just make sure that you're well rounded and that you protect yourself, and you know that you listen, that you're in tune with yourself that you listen to your team and more importantly don't have an ego you know what i mean um ego is the right. biggest thing that can that can hurt you especially in this field That's just true. because you have a couple of tv shows or just because you are on the tv show or or, ghost, or, because, or, or ghost or because the discovery channel or travel channel casted you for one episode it, it, you know it doesn't make you a paranormal celebrity you know uh, the fact that people would want to be paranormal celebrities is, is is it's dumb it's dumb you know it's like you're trying to be famous off of spirits you know what i mean come on don't right. don't be like that don't be don't, yeah, don't, don't be like that. Puppets, you know, like. yeah you know there's a lot of yeah you know, a lot of <laughs> souls out there that are hurt that are wandering that are lost and here you are trying to make a buck and a dollar off of them and and you think that you know you're 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 the last bat you're the last dorito in in the bag of chips come on now mm -mm. so yeah that's my advice. Have fun. Be safe. Don't have an ego, and you'll be okay. That's true. You had to answer one of my next questions. Which, what advice would you give to someone that likes to be involved in paranormal? Well, I mean, don't get involved in the paranormal in the first place. Right. <laughs> you know, that's that's you know the the biggest thing is like, why would you want to get involved with with spirits? Why would you want to get involved with unknown energies that can hurt you in, in a really bad way? You know, why would you want to get involved with, you know, people who are suffering from really bad spiritual attacks? You know, I mean, you, you got to be in the right mindset and it's not for everybody, you know. Right. Sometimes you're more you want... psychic, like, yeah, I only yeah, have no yeah. choice, but, you know. Yeah, this is, this is a calling. This is a calling mm -hmm. to me. Definitely and, a calling. you know, just because, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor. But right. the, the saying is just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you should be a doctor. You know, or like I'm a psychic, not a psychologist. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, you I, know I studied I'm, it, but I'm not yeah. a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a counselor. You know, I study chaplaincy, but I'm not a psychologist. You know, right. I mean, I, I understand basic principles of, of you know, the the human mind, but I'm not a psychologist. I can't go in depth and tell you this and that, or or give you, you know, I understand basic principles of of, of human intelligence, and and you know, they're they're psych. But I'm not a psychologist, so. Right. Real quickly, um, what is some signs that you look for uh, 
in a case or location that might be haunted or like you know demonic or other type well, of haunted. I mean, well like you know i'm looking for you know suspicious <laughs> noises i'm looking for you know sounds that i uh, you know sounds lights flickering but i think it just all depends like case by case you know um when it comes to the other side, the, the darker side, I'm looking for a full psychological and mental evaluation first. And then once that happens, once that happens and there's stuff that's happening that we can't explain, we'll do a further investigation and see. Um, but, you know, if you're levitating off the ground and you're speaking different languages and you're climbing up the wall backwards, that's probably a good indicator. That's definitely that something's not right. That's probably a good indicator that something's not right, you know. But, like, haunted areas, you know, I... People, you know, they look for certain things, and I, I'm looking to disprove the haunting. I, I, I don't believe that anything is haunted. If you tell me something is haunted, I'm, I'm not going to believe you. You know, I'm going to go disprove it. Just because everybody else said it doesn't mean I'm going to believe it. You know, I, right. if I'm going to go, you know, I need to see it for myself. You know what I mean? And, and more than likely, it's been my experience that the times that I've gone to places that are supposedly haunted, I haven't had any experiences, so but that's not to say that the other persons have it. Right, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, should we um tell you probably some um that you like to share how people can find you and your awesome work? Yeah. Yeah, you can find me at the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can also find me um on fatherkendoctor.com so it's father ken d-o-c-t-o-r.com so father ken doctor spelled out completely dot com awesome is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we go or no thank you for having me on the show it was it was a privilege it's always an honor to be on the air with you and next time we'll go for a few more hours oh yeah yeah, yeah so we'll that was the holiday so we should say happy holidays yeah. Happy holidays, everyone. Have a Merry Christmas and be safe. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you guys, too. Thank you, Nikki. All right. Take care. And bye. Take care. Good night. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. That was Father Ken uh, Torres from the Warren Files. Yeah. And um, before I lose my voice, you guys have a very happy holidays. All right. Bye, guys. See, I mean,